Hi, Maggie. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for agreeing to participate. No, no, it was great. It's a great opportunity because then I can learn through this as well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did too before I was ready to oh. present. Yeah. Oh, hello, Jolene. How are you? <laughs> good, thank you. Thank you again for, for agreeing to join. No worries. We were just saying how it's um, a good, what I did as well is I participated in a few before I was ready to do it myself. Yep. Yeah. This is preparation. But, yeah, so hopefully um, if this all goes well, then I'll be able to finally submit the, uh, <laughs> the module. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's pretty full on, isn't it? That's why I sort of thought if I join in on a couple and sort of see how other people run them and then I might get my head around my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you guys, um, how long did you guys start the course? I only started in July, but I haven't put a lot of, I've only done a couple of assignments. So um, I'm just getting ready to tackle this one and I'm sort of, pushing it back and pushing it back and <laughs> I'll do it next week. I'll do it next week. <laughs> yeah. Delaying yeah. the inevitable. Yeah. I start like two, three weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I already hang in uh, like the first two units, like a DS, DS401 and DS402. So well yeah. done. Yeah. It's, but it's behind because my child, like she's in school, which is good. <laughs> so I can start in school time and I work part-time as well, but just, yeah, so I, don't, I don't really get much sleep now. No, yeah. full on. I might just turn this light on because I think I'm in a little bit darkness, but I just want to see if I can make it not too bright. <laughs> yeah. I just worry about the flare. So, yeah. so to, I don't want to blind people. Is that hurting your eyes at all, or no, no, that's distracting that, that's or anything right. like that? The light above me, no? no. It's really hard to get the angle so that it's not there. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, where do you live, Jolene? Uh, young. Ah, country New South Wales. Country. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I don't know where it is. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's about an hour and a half inland from Canberra. It's cherry capital. We're just about yeah. to start um, picking cherries. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. nice, beautiful. Yeah. You think it'll be a good harvest? Have you had enough rain now? We have had so much rain. <laughs> We've had a lot of rain. Uh, I think it's like it's more than 200 more meals rain this year than what we had this time last year. So we've had an enormous amount of rain considering what we've had the previous years. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll see how that affects. Uh, I know a few crops and that's all, there's a lot of canola around as well. And a lot of that got wiped out. So I'm just not really sure because we've had a lot of rain and storms and yeah. Oh yes. I saw that on the news actually. There was the concern about that. Yeah. Can't win. No. Oh, look, people are starting to join some more ones. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I'll just, um, yeah, just wait for the other few guys to jump on and then um, we'll do, get a start, hey? Sounds good. Oops, I might just close my emails down. <clears throat> Carolyn. Well, good. Looks like we've got Chris just about to join us as well. Yeah. Kylie, can you see my video or not? Uh, not yet, Joe. I think it's a problem with my laptop. Yeah, I'll just use my mobile then. Please let oh, no me. Worries. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Yeah.
Oh, yep, we can see you now, Joe. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to you. just, yeah, close the, uh, yep, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Just um, doing a quick roll call. <laughs> just to see who we're waiting um, to zoom in. So I think we're waiting on Denise. Helen. Are you one? Denise, Harold, Helen, Carolyn. Okay. One, two, three, four. Can you see each other as well? Yep. Yep. Great, great. Yep. Excellent. All good. And Carolyn's just zooming in, I think. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Carolyn. How are you? Good, good. How are we all? Good, thanks. Good. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty happy because in Melbourne we're about to be released into the Hooray! <laughs> How many Thank of you. us are from Melbourne? Yep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just a nice you. feeling, isn't it? Knowing that we won't right. have so many boundaries. Yeah. Brisbane, so it's just been like normal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have family all over Australia and we've been the only ones in Melbourne. And we feel like we're being like naughty children, but we haven't really <laughs> been doing anything wrong. I know. Um, very, very naughty. Everyone else is living a normal life, so but we're about to be out there now, so which is really nice. It is. Really. And pleasing. you know, our numbers are down, so we're happy. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Okay, everyone, are we happy to maybe make a start? I think we're I've got um, enough participants that I need. Yep, go. Fantastic. Let's do this. So, um, good morning, everyone. My name's Kylie Gilbert, and I'll be your presenter today. And what I'm going to do is to just um, talk you through what you're going to be learning about today. And then I'm going to um, then want to find out a little bit more about you as well. So, what I'm just going to do now is to share my screen. <clears throat> All right, so can you, can you guys see that? Yep, yep. Beautiful. Yep. All right, so just to um, just introduce what you're going to be learning about today. It's coming up now. Whoops. All right. Um, just needing to, there we go. I think it's coming up. Can you all see that um, first welcome slide? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. So this is the first presentation of two that you'll be participating in today, both running in around 40 minutes of length. And what the first part of the 40 minute training you'll be learning about is an overview of the New South Wales child protection system. And this is um, related to CHC PRT 001, identify and respond to children and young people at risk. Just uh, also too, just a little bit about me. If I can just get the slide to go to the next one. Okay. So just a little bit about myself. I have 18 years experience working for New South Wales Department of Family and Community Services, which has mostly involved frontline child protection work. But in the last couple of years, I've moved into the public housing stream of our agency. I've delivered frontline services for the After Hours Crisis Response Team, which is a team that's based in Sydney, where when there's a report that comes through about risk of harm to a child in the middle of the night, then we're the after hours people who would go directly to the home and to intervene. So what it means is that when all our offices across New South Wales close at five o'clock, reports still keep coming in 24-7. So we would just respond to the ones that couldn't wait until the following day when they'd be able to get a response from the local office. So that were the most serious of serious matters, as you could probably appreciate, if they couldn't wait until the next day. I've also um, performed the role of manager client services in the local um, child protection offices, both in Newcastle and Sydney over the years, which is a role I really enjoyed. And I've also been involved in leading some major reform projects. Your turn. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen so you can all see each other. And if I can just maybe um, um, go around the room and the virtual room, and um, maybe if I could just start 
with with Maggie. And what I'd what I'd like you to do, if it's okay, is just to tell us a little bit about a little bit about yourself, and also to if you've ever worked or are working in a field where you work with families and children, and also to if there's anything in particular you'd like to get out of the session today. Um, so I was a teacher uh, back in Taiwan. Um, I moved to Australia studying in Melbourne um, and finished my diploma and early childhood education. And I uh, working um, daycare and then um, I was a director, assistant director. So yeah, and now I just want to move on to the next level. Um, so I do um, for the family a lot with the uh, and the children with special needs. Yeah. So, so that's why I like I'm very happy to partic participate this session because it's really related like what I'm doing. It sure yeah. is. Sure is. Mm. That's wonderful. Thank you, Maggie. Jolene. Um, I have. Hey, going. I, I've uh, been working in aged care actually for uh, probably eighteen years. Um, just sort of started at the bottom, worked my way to the top of my facility. So I'm now the facility manager. Um, I spent a lot of time just uh, trying to be able to ensure that I can relate to my staff. And uh, my key passion in that is actually uh, in education or aged care. So uh, that's sort of, I think, the direction I'm heading with this uh, to do this trainer assessor course. And um, I just thought it's 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 never too late to learn something new. And my other little interests that are, you know, depending on where I decide, I might do a complete change and not continue aged care is is childcare. So, um, okay. yeah, hence a good thing for me to have a listen today. Fantastic, thank you, Jolene. Yep. Uh, so now, Tiart, I'm so sorry um, if I haven't said that right. <laughs> uh, no, it's fine. I'm actually from South Africa. My name is Chot. You pronounce it like a chart on the wall. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I'm into open cost mining. And uh, what I'd like to get from the session is I do part-time coaching for children at schools, uh, rugby league. So, yeah. And which state do you live in, Chart? Uh, Middleburg. Central South Africa, yeah. Oh, okay. And, and do you live, where do you live now in Australia? Is it Victoria or did you say? No, I'm currently in South Africa. Stranded yet due oh. to the COVID. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Look. Good effort. It's probably midnight over there. Yeah, well. <laughs> wow. all, all right, yeah. That's amazing. I didn't realise. Did any of you guys realise that we also had international um, fellow students? You did? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. Welcome. Thank you. Helen. Hello. Hi. How are I'm, you? Good. How are you? Good. <laughs> I'm Helen. I live on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. I have 30 years experience in travel and tourism. So I've been a tour leader in the Middle East, a product manager, sales, business development. Poor old travel's in a bit of a world of pain at the moment. So yeah. I'm unfortunately out of work and but I did do six years of training with Flight Centre, so I haven't had much experience with kids, to be honest, but I have two kids of my own, um, <laughs> one in grade five and one in year seven. Well, so I'm sure I can still get... Yeah. <laughs> so effectively, I'm surrounded by them. So um, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot out of today learning something new as I consider what my next move is career-wise. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Helen. No problem. Hello, Sue. Hey, how are you? How are you going? Good. Um, like Charles, I'm also South African, but I'm actually here in Melbourne. Okay. Um, much more convenient timeline for me. Um, I'm a physiotherapist. I've been a physio for 30 years and probably working the other end of the age spectrum. Most of my clients are, I sort of see in their homes for rehab in the home. So they're usually at least of 70 or the way up to, I think my oldest is 97 at the moment. Mm. Um, so zero experience in childcare other than the fact that I raised fairly successfully two kids so my youngest has just turned 18 so I've washed my hands of that now but I'm still I'm looking forward to an interesting session. Wow it sounds like you're yeah, working in aged care in, in Victoria mm -hmm. um, must have been such a challenge and you know what hats off to you guys 
what an amazing job you've done. And, you know, and even if you haven't had much, um, any sort of background in childcare or child protection, the thing is you're a frontline service and you provide mm -hmm. caregiving, you know, yeah. so it's all, it's all part of the same package. Absolutely. The same, the same way of working. So mm. that's wonderful. Thank you, yeah. Sue. No worries. Hi, Chris Porter. Hello. Welcome. So um, <clears throat> I live in sunny Brisbane. Uh, we haven't had much problems with COVID really. Um, so I work in a school, uh, or, sorry, a trade college. I'm a carpenter by trade, but I'm the head of department for the, the better section. So I um, deal with school, school kids year 11 and 12. Um, and I've got 15 trainers under me that deliver all the courses. And I sort of just look after them. But I've been in the RTO land for probably six years. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for joining, Chris. All right, thank you. Good morning, Carolyn. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I've, um, yeah, so my name's Carol Ben, and I'm being, I live in Melbourne. I think I've had probably one of the best job changes in the world. I'm a professional community development worker. I work in neighbourhood houses, and we cover people from naught to 100 plus. And my job is pretty much about helping people to be empowered to become the best that they can be and to help them navigate and work through whatever their challenges might be. But I did start out being a kinder gym teacher. I've been a scout leader for many years. I'm a mum. So I've sort of seen the different journeys for a lot of people. And, um, and I became really passionate about helping uh, grassroots community groups and parents navigate the red tape, if you like. Mm. And in, Recently, I've become more passionate about working with the forgotten Australians because, you know, you're seeing that internal cycle happening. Yeah. And I feel that it's really important that um, we, we just have services like neighbourhood houses that can be open and friendly to all levels and help bring in the services that are needed. So I don't, we don't try to be the counsellors or anything, but what we do do is we refer on to the appropriate services and set up the, top, the right type of relationship. Because, you know, quite often when people are in need, it's not just them, it's a whole family situation. Yep. So, yeah. And as a manager of a neighbourhood house, um, you know, we do yoga, we do Tai Chi, we go for walks, we're out in the garden. But we also do a bit of that welfare arm as well. So, you know, I sleep very well at night, although it can be stressful. Um, and I've actually been doing a lot of recent studies on um, self-care and making sure that, you know, we get through all of this and that those of us that are on the front line actually survive and get through this. Yeah. Maintaining our own health as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so, Carolyn, how inspirational. Pardon? I said, and I'm studying this because um, I've been hassled by the local uni to teach community development. Um, and I've been supporting a lot of students over the years studying their de degree in um, community services, community development. So um, I finally thought the COVID year, why not? This is the year to get the certificate behind me. Yeah. Wow. How inspirational is that, guys? What a great, what a great story. What a fantastic, um, yeah, fantastic line of work you're in. And, and Carolyn, I could just see how you'd be perfectly suited to, to delivering the community services training, that's for sure. All that wisdom and expertise that you have. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, how are you? Your turn. Yeah. Good. Thanks. How are you? Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'm from Melbourne. Uh, so I basically work in university sector, uh, teaching basically in 3D printing or additive manufacturing. So, yeah. So we have the child uh, working with children check recently. Yeah. It means maybe introduced for last four years. So it's compulsory right. now. Even we work with mainly adults only. But yeah, we have to work that now they encourage kids to come to uni to learn or like to see what they want to learn in future. Lovely. Yeah. That's so I'll be much interested to see your talk today. Yeah. Thanks very much, Joe. And okay. last but not least, we've got Denise. Yes. Hi, Denise. And I'll just explain, I'm not lucky. That's my son. Somehow <laughs> I've got onto his Zoom account and I don't know how, and I don't know how to get <laughs> off it. So, <laughs> so I'm Denise anyway. Um, I, my background is um, early childhood. I worked in early childhood for 30 years. Um, injured my back, was off work for oh, at least five, six years and 
decided that it wouldn't be feasible to go back to childcare. So I'm now working with um, young adults with um, disabilities and I'm teaching um, work, and work education, like the certificate one in work education and the certificate one in transitional education um, to teach them work life skills, to get them prepared to be able to go out and work. Um, and um, or to you know, become independent and live yeah. on their own, yeah. you know, and move out of home, that sort of thing. Thoroughly enjoying it. It's probably the best job I've ever had, even though I love the children, but this is just mm. so fulfilling. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, <clears throat> and so I haven't, I've done a lot of the um, protection, child protection stuff, but I haven't done anything yeah. for a long time. So I thought this would be a good um, way to refresh what I what I've already learnt and see if I can act, if I actually remember it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's me. And I'm in Victoria, I'm in Victoria, but I'm in um, rural Victoria. So we really haven't had too much. Um, well, we have, we're still wearing the masks and we've yeah. still been, you know, we're still under a lot of conditions, but nothing like what Melbourne have been through. So mm. we've, I feel lucky to be honest. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Thank wow. You. Okay. So, what a great mixture of, of um, participants we have. So, how, let's say we um, get stuck into it, and let's see what we can um, learn today. So, I'm just going to share my screen again. Are you guys um, able to see that? All good. Thumbs up. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. Just a couple of ground rules that we'll just quickly talk about. The first one is like um, very happy for you to ask questions anywhere along the slideshow at all. Not a problem. Please don't feel you need to wait until the end because um, I'm very happy to answer it as we go. In regards to work health and safety, if I could just uh, make sure that all of you are sitting in a chair in a position that's a comfortable position and that you're not straining your eyes or anything like that, that you can see me and hear me okay on the screen. And if you need to get up and to stretch at all or anything like that, please do so, because I just want you to feel comfortable. And um, it, we're all adult learners here, so um, I'm sure that that'll, be, that'll work out well. The other thing I just wanted to touch base on is that, I mean, we're talking about a subject of child protection. And I've deliberately designed any scenario so that it's not too confronting because the object is to not be too confronting or distressing about, about the, um, the topic, but it's about providing you with an overview of the system itself. So um, if there's any, you know, if you're feeling like it, there's anything confronting or things like that um, afterwards, and if um, then I probably recommend that you might want to uh, reach out to um, professional agency, either in your own work or, or even, you know, other, you know, support lines that are out there. But like I said, it's not confronting stuff. I wouldn't do that to you. Okay, just a quick topic overview. All right, so remembering I'm in New South Wales, so I'm talking to the New South Wales and Children and Young Persons Care and Protection Act. I'm going to give you a little overview about that. The legislation that we work under actually has about 242 different sections. So it's very big legislation. Good news for you guys is I'm only gonna focus on three sections out of the 242. So I'm not gonna overwhelm you with things, just the main things. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the role of other agencies in the child protection system, as well as the legal mandatory reporting obligations for professionals. And so we'll cover those topics off. And that will mean that then for the next session, it'll naturally flow on to, uh, if you are a mandatory reporter, how do you actually then go and make a child protection report and what are the sorts of uh, things that you need to be thinking about? So by the end of the session, what my hope is that you'll just learn some, not gain some knowledge about the key elements of the legislation. Like I said, not all of it. Not even I know all of it. We can't possibly. It's just too, it's just too big. Um, understand how the system works. And as I said, 
understand what's meant by a mandatory reporter and legal obligations. Does anyone have a question or anything or a concern so far before I just move on to the content? All good. All good? Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so just very quickly around definitions. So we actually get, yeah, you might have noticed, or maybe not, but the legislation, you can see there that it has, the heading is New South Wales Children and Young Persons Act. So you might wonder, well, why is, what's the difference between a child and young, why are we distinguishing children and young people? It's purely because a child refers to a person under the age of 16 years. And there's certain parts of the child protection system where six, anyone under 16 years falls into a certain category, but a child and a young person is aged 16 to 17. Because that, those who are aged 16 to 17 years legally are able to do um, things themselves and live independently. Like for example, if they decide to leave home, they can do that. Legally, they can do that. Whereas if you're under 16, you can't, unless you have parental, you know, um, appropriate parental supervision or a caregiver supervision and permission from your parents. So that's just one sort of like example of that. The other reason why I'm just pointing this out is because as mandatory reporters, we're only mandated to report concerns about a child under 16 years and not those that are aged 16 to 17. Although, you know, it's encouraged obviously that, you know, um, you still should, you have a duty of care to, but you should also talk to the young person about it and give them some say about whether they want their concerns reported. But it does depend on the context and the situation. It's just a guideline. Okay, so here's the three relevant sections of the legislation that we're going to be, um, I'm going to be running you through today. The first one is section 23, which is about what the, def the um, definition is of child and young person at risk of significant harm. Section 24 is about talking about reporting those concerns and how, and how you do that. And section 27 is about mandatory reporting. Okay, so first of all, just to give you an overview of what is meant by risk of significant harm under our New South Wales child protection legislation. There's actually a policy definition and this is important because it provides what we call the threshold for reporting. So, for example, it's got to be sufficiently serious to warrant a response by a statutory authority, irrespective of a family's consent. It also can, it's not a minor or trivial thing and may reasonably be expected to, to produce a substantial and demonstrably adverse impact on the child or young person's safety, welfare or well-being. So just to give you an idea of what's meant by that, for example, if a person is concerned about a child who came to school one day and said, I didn't have breakfast today, but that was the only time, and that child is for all um, intents and purposes, looks healthy, is very well adjusted, has a loving family, that's not sufficiently serious to warrant a response by a statutory authority. Does that make sense? Yeah. Remembering that the statutory authority is it's got to be so bad that we need to get in there and to see whether we actually do need to take any legal action, whether we do need to um, maybe take that child from the home because they're in significant danger. So that's the threshold that we're looking at. And that's what our definition of child abuse is in New South Wales. I'm just gonna let you have a little bit of a look at that for a minute. These are the categories under section 23 of the legislation where these are the abuse and neglect categories that we look at. And what I'd just like to invite you to do is just if you have a particular question about any of those categories or you need a little bit more clarification about what it means, I'll just give you an opportunity to just um, 
have a think about that. And if there's any questions you want to ask me, because it's a lot um, of pre mm -hmm. prenatal report. What's that? Yeah. yeah, I was waiting for someone to ask about that because yeah, a prenatal report is about um, concerns for a pregnant woman. Okay. And so before she's given birth. So we actually get a lot of prenatal reports in child protection from hospitals. And um, it's usually, generally speaking, things like they might call us and say, look, we're really um, worried because mum-to-be is um, using illicit substances and we're worried about, the, 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 you know, what that means for the baby mm. or, you know, mum-to-be, parents-to-be have missed all of their prenatal appointments. We're worried there might be some violence in the home. You know, yeah. we're worried about homelessness, a whole lot of things. Now, the interesting thing is that, and naturally, um, it's not statutory. We don't have any statutory powers to make mum to be do anything while the baby's still in, you know, in utero. Yeah. All we can do is to intervene and see if we can um, provide some support or encouragement to um, maybe address some of those issues upon birth. Sadly, sometimes. Um, you know, it, it will mean that the, the little baby would need to be um, assume, what we call assumed into care upon birth, whilst we then maybe work with the family to see how quickly we can get that baby back to the family. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, it might also be that, you know, um, the, the little baby that comes along might already have siblings, older siblings who are also in care. And then, um, yeah, and wherever possible, we'd want to have that little baby in the same uh, care situation as their siblings and keep the family as intact as we can. Yep. That's the ideal, but, you know, not necessarily how it works out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions before I move on to the next slide? Anything you're curious about? I'm interested. All good? Thumbs up? Okay, thank you. All right, so what is a mandatory reporter? I won't read that to you. I'll, I'll let you read it. So there's, yeah, a mandatory, mandatory reporter is someone who in their professional work or paid employment provides delivered services to children. So for example, um, you know, some of you guys in, um, in the um, learner group today worked in childcare, work in hospitals, work in, um, with, with, um, community, in community. I was just curious about, um, Carolyn in, and the guys in Melbourne, do you have um, something like that in your legislation as well, where you're considered to be a mandatory reporter? Yes. Yeah. So everybody in now industry must have a working with children's check. Yes. Um, and we're funded under the Department of Health and Human Services. Yes. So we have to be watching the space. Yes. That's right. So what it means is, um, so basically, in, an, in other words, if you work um, in services that's delivered to children and you spot something that you're concerned about, that you might be concerned about a child or um, who's being abused or neglected, by law, you must report it. It's your, it's legal, you're legally obliged to report it. That's right. Yep. And um, what they did was a couple of years ago, there used to be a significant fine attached. So that um, work, if a worker did not report it, they faced a significant fine. It was, I think it was about $10,000. But they ended up changing um, that and reducing the penalty because what was happening was people were panicking and reporting everything, which I'll um, talk about a little bit later as well. And all that did was clog up the system. And um, unfortunately, then some things got missed. And, you know, children who really did need to receive a statutory response, um, unfortunately, didn't necessarily get the response they needed. So I'll just move on to typical scenarios. So when I'm talking about typical scenarios, because I'm currently working, um, you know, in public house with public housing, I have a team, a couple of teams who uh, go and visit people in their homes. 
I just wanted to just contextualize. If, if you were a public housing worker where I work, how would you normally interact with families and children? So here's just some typical scenarios. There's lots of interactions. It could be when they're doing a home visit. They might spot something, um, a concern with a little child when they do a home visit to a family who's one of our tenants in one of our properties. It could be when they interview someone in the office. We get people who um, come into the office needing assistance or just to talk about a tenancy related matter. But in the course of the conversation, might mention something like they're really frightened of their partner because they're experiencing violence in the home, which is a big red flag for us. So they could get that information that way. Also over the phone, like we might have a homeless family requesting assistance with temporary accommodation. And what I will just mention here as well, under the child protection legislation, there's also a provision for any family or anyone to call us and request assistance which happens a fair bit. There's usually two reasons why a family would call us to request assistance. One is with homelessness issues. The other one is uh, when they need help with their teenagers. So they're having issues with their teenagers and they just are at their wits end. They don't feel they're able to provide, you know, the care and control and supervision. Their children might be just, um, or you know, Engaging in very risk-taking behaviour, um, they're very distressed and it's really, it's, it's really difficult because, um, you know, they just don't know what to do. Um, their child doesn't want to engage with any, you know, services or doesn't, you know, it's, 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 it's quite heartbreaking actually. All right. So just, I just wanted to give you um, a glimpse at this case scenario. This is actually the scenario that we're going to work through in the second session. But I just wanted to illustrate, so this, has come on, this would come under the category of neglect under the legislation, particularly in relation to inadequate supervision. I'll just let you have a quick read. So this would be a scenario that child protection would be interested in knowing about. And we are going to work that through in the next session. Okay, I just want to briefly touch on um, a holistic view of the New South Wales child protection system. So there's some other important parts. So it's not just about statutory child protection workers being involved solely responsible for um, the care and protection of children. There's something um, in New South Wales called child wellbeing units. And there's one for police, one for health, and one for education. Has anyone ever heard of a child wellbeing unit by any chance? It's, it's actually, yeah, it's a new concept. When I say new, it was when it was, they started up 10 years ago when the legislation changed. And the reason for these units is to try and stop children and families from falling through the cracks. So there might be a situation where, as a worker, you're concerned about a family, but it doesn't meet the threshold to report to child protection. But there's still some concerns about that family and you feel like they really need maybe some, well, there's wellbeing concerns. And there's concerns that if they don't, if someone doesn't help or support this family in the next little while, then they might end up coming to the attention of, of child protection and nobody wants that. So uh, they support police wellbeing unit, support police um, and similarly health and education. So it's a place where uh, teachers or health workers can go. It's their own internal unit where they can talk about what they're worried about for children and what they might be able to do which takes us into early intervention and intensive support services. So you might recall um, earlier on in the presentation, I was talking about the last thing we ever wanna do is to go into a home and remove a child. And we wanna throw everything at it we can to try and prevent that from happening. That's where the early intervention and intensive support services come in. 
A lot of those services are actually funded by the Child Protection Agency in New South Wales, but they're non-government organisations. So we, you know, they're provided with lots of funding and, and so that they can actually get into the home and really support this family. It's a voluntary thing, so the family has to agree. But these early intervention services can provide things like they'll go into the home, they might be needing to just support and teach parents around some parenting skills. It might be something even very practical, like even helping them clean up, um, getting rid of some of the hazards in the home, taking them to appointments, things like that. Just whatever is needed, whatever it takes. Um, the other thing we have, which is, yeah, unfortunately, if a child just cannot, it's too dangerous for a child to live in the home at that time, we do have obviously out of home care services. But what I'm really pleased about is that when we do remove a child, one of the first things we need to do within those critical few months is have a look and to see what's the realistic possibility of restoration back to mum and dad. And it's basically now in our practice, which is good, it's a matter of, well, if not, why not? So we always have to look at that and then say, okay, well, what do we need to do to get this child back? What do the parents need to do to, get, to have it safe for them to be restored back to their care? And there's been some very good um, outcomes with that, which is very, very pleasing. However, if that unfortunately um, isn't a viable option, there's also adoption services. And there's been a big push um, all around Australia, actually, in the last couple of years. I'm not sure if you've, yeah, you'll see some nodding heads, yeah, around children who are in out of home care. If, if there's, we know that there's no way they're gonna be able to return back, then it's something that they wanna uh, think about is adoption. Now they're open adoptions now, which is wonderful. Parents, in these situations, the parents of the child, the natural parents, um, we like them to consent to that open adoption because it also means that it does, they can still see their children. So even if a parent, a natural parent has uh, signed over to, for that, their young child or you know, older child to be adopted, they still get contact with that child. It might be um, something like four times a year or it might be uh, whenever you like. You know, it just depends on the situation and what's written into those orders. But it's about, it's really about um, giving the children a sense of permanency, security, and what they like to call a forever home. Um, so that they um, feel that no one's gonna come and uh, move me to another foster home, which is a terrible thing that unfortunately happens, you know, for some children, there are many, many, many foster homes. So they just know, look, I'm part of this family and I'll, and I'll always be part of this family. Has anyone got any questions about that? I'm just mindful of the time as well. We've got about a couple more minutes. All good? Excellent. Oh, okay. Any, yeah, I think, did I just ask uh, any questions? <laughs> I did, did not. Yeah. That was awesome. Did someone just have that a question? That was really good. No, that was really good. Well, well presented. Oh, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to um, actually ask you a little very tiny quick poll and then we'll um, sign off. But so here's the questions and who'd like to have a go at the answer? B? Yes. Well done, Helen. It's B. A mandatory reporter is defined as a person who delivers services to children as part of their work or paid employment. They're not defined as a family member or friend or a volunteer, but they legally must if they are a person who delivers, a child, delivers services to children. Very quick recap. What did we learn today? Hopefully we had a little bit of an insight and learned about the key elements of the child protection legislation, the categories of abuse and how the system fits together and the role of police, education, health workers and non-government organisations. In our next um, session, what we'll do is we'll actually um, apply what's called a mandatory reporter guide 
to make a report about abuse and neglect and I'll show you how to do that. If you wanted to locate some more information, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the internet. I'll show you the reporter community in the next session. But there's also, uh, you know, Communities and Justice website or your equivalent in your um, jurisdiction. Lots and lots of information for families on that statute, on your, the statutory agencies, websites in your area. And, you know, for those of you who really love legislation and want to dive into it more, there's an online version of the Children and Young Persons Care and Protection Act if you wanted to have a look. A little bit of light reading. Just a tiny bit of light reading. Exactly right. <laughs> light reading. <laughs> Heavy Stay reading. In the bar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, all right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for participating. And um, I'll end the session now. And then are we okay? We're all okay to then um, join back again at 11.30? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Yep, sure. That's no fine. Worries. Lovely. Thank See you. See you in 15 minutes. Go and have a cup of tea, oh. stretch. See you soon. Thanks, Carly. Really good, Carly. Well Thank done. You. Well Thank done, you Carly. Bye-bye. Where do we leave? <laughs> leave. <laughs>